Welcome back to Elden Ring. In this video, we are going through a guide on how to become overpowered at the start of the game. Credit for this goes to Boomstick Gaming. I'll leave a link to his channel in the description. I just have to share this with you. It's such a great guide. There are lots of steps, so there'll be a lot of cuts in the video, but I'll do my very best to explain exactly where you need to go and what you need to do. So starting this one off, we are just outside the gates. This is as soon as you get to Limgrave. And what you want to do from the first step is head over to the north. And you're going to go to the church of Eli, if that's how you pronounce it. As soon as you get to the church, if you go to this like pole, pick this up. This is a level 2 golden rune. And once you get in here, you're going to want to interact with the site of grace. And over here on the smithing table, there will be a smithing stone. So make sure you pick that one up. And then from here, we are going to make our way over to the north again. We're going to go to gate front, but more gate front ruins. So if you just get onto this path, this road, and just follow that all the way along... I'm going to jump on my mount again and just make it to this path. There's a guy walking up and down it with a torch. Ignore him. In this entire video, you won't need to fight any enemies at all. So just keep following this. Ignore everyone. And what you want to do is make your way straight past this guy here. Come into the ruins. And on this pillar here, you're going to have a map fragment. So make sure you grab that. And then if you come over towards this gate, you're going to rest at this site of grace here. So I'm actually going to do that to reset all the enemies because I don't fancy the aggro. The first time you come to this site of grace, you will interact with a finger maiden in a little cutscene. She is going to give you your mount. If you wanted to, if you were able to, if you go back into the ruins, now that you've got your mount, it should be a little bit easier. But what you're going to do, these caravans here, they have chests, so if you can defeat those enemies, you can grab loot from them. But what we're going to do is try and get over here. And there's a little staircase that leads down. I'm hoping the aggro disappears so I don't have to fight everyone. But down here you'll see a little chest. This is going to contain, if I remember correctly, because I've done some of this before. I believe this gives you your first... Where is it? I think it's your first Ash of War. The Great Sword and the Flail I got out of the caravans that were above ground. Yeah, so I'm not 100% sure what you're going to get from that chest. I'm pretty sure it is the Ash of War. But then if we make our way... Back out of here, we're going to keep heading east, so try and ignore all the enemies. Uh-oh, that can't be good. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Just here, off the path, you'll see it straight ahead of us, so like dead east from the uh, first site of grace where you'll interact with the Finger Maiden, and as soon as you come out of that, little like cave thing underneath the ruins you're going to interact with that site of grace so what we're going to do from this site of grace is follow the path again heading southeast and we're going to stay on it until we get to the bridge there are going to be some enemies but you can just avoid them all so i'm going to come off the path a little bit still heading southeast and then I'm going to go back onto the path, because there's guys to the left at the campfire. And on this bridge over on the right hand side, you will get a level 1 smithing stone. So make sure you grab that. Try and avoid this uh, guy on his horse. But we're going to carry on heading southeast off this bridge. You're going to see the big troll dudes walking the caravan. They're there right in front of us. And if you look straight in front of me right now, there's a triangle pointed like building or what's left of a building we're gonna head behind that and if i gather all these materials on the way just behind it we should see 
a site full of tombs. Here they are. There are some wolves. But on these, if I get myself out of combat, if I need to... Yeah, one's coming over. But on these tombs, there will be... Here's one. Pick up item. A level 3 golden rune. These golden runes will give you extra runes, which you can use for leveling up. You have to use them from your inventory. Trying to be careful of the wolves at the same time. But don't use them until you're ready to use them. If you use them before you're ready, you're not near a site of grace. You have all the runes at the bottom right and then you die. You have to gather them and then if you die again after losing them, basically you get one opportunity to go and collect them. If you fail, they're gone forever. I believe that's all of them from this tomb site. It looks as though it is. So on to the next part. So when you're finished with the tomb site, you're going to open up your map and you're going to fast travel back to the Agil Lake North. So if you just click on it with A if you're on Xbox in your map, you can fast travel to any site of grace, which I think is really, really good. There's no rune cost or anything like that. So, from this site of grace, if I get on the trusty horse, I'm going to go over to the right-hand side, just avoiding combat. That massive wall with the gate, that's where we're heading. So, just head west from the Agil Lake North site of grace. I mean, realistically, if you wanted to, you could just come to this one that's here. You're going to head through. That guy up top, ignore him. We're going to charge through. I'm going to stick to the left-hand side. Try and avoid all the arrow or arrows that are being fired at us. Keep going up this path. Ignore all the combat. I mean, unless you want to grab all the runes and stuff if you think you can take them enemies on. But what you're going to do at the very top, you're going to see this tree. There's going to be a golden seed. Grab that. That's going to give you an extra flask use. And then follow the path, keep going up. There's going to be wolves that drop down and ambush you, but just ignore them. And then round on your right-hand side, there's going to be a site of grace. So we are going to rest there to get rid of all the enemies. They do respawn, but it drops all their aggro. So those wolves won't be there anymore. When you're here, there's going to be a body set up on top of this. So climb your way up. This body that's sat here is going to give you a stone sword key. And another thing you can do is with the golden seed you've just picked up at the site of grace. If you go into your flasks, you can add a charge to your flask. So use one golden seed to increase it. I'm going to do yes. And there we go. So I now have six charges on my flask. So you'll see there on the bottom left, I've got six charges with it. Then in the same area, head into this building, and there's going to be someone sat down here. The first time you talk to this person, you're going to get an emote. What you need to do is speak to this person three times. So this is the uh, second time now for me. And that's going to be absolutely nothing. And then the third time, we have a spirit jellyfish ashes. So what we're going to do now is get on our mount and we come back out towards the site of grace we're going to ignore the wolf ambush we're going to stick to this wall and follow it all the way around so just keep going and then eventually when we get further around here There's going to be a little section right here. We're going to jump up. We're going to keep following the path all the way up. And you're going to see all these spirit jellyfish. If you just ignore them. And you come right over here. There's going to be a, another smithing stone. And then what we're going to do is just uh, very quickly... Leave this area. After you've grabbed that smithing stone, if you just fast travel back to Stormhill Shack. 
So now what we're going to do is from this site of grace, we're going to go around to the right and we're going to go behind this southeast. And what we are going to find, if we drop off here and carry on, you're going to see people sat around here or just like some weird sort of little site thing where there, uh, there was people. And there's going to be a smithing stone here. And then what we're going to do from here is head north. And we're just going to keep going up north. And then over this way, if we just follow it, you're going to see this little hill here. And we're going to ignore this massive enemy that's up here. But over on the right hand side... All the way around here, you are going to have the Strength Knot Crystal Tear. And then what we're going to do from here is head south, and we are going to find another tomb site. Uh-oh, I aggroed him. That's not good. I heard him. So we've got the big dude backing up. So that's where he's sitting, and he's not directly south. I was going to show you until he <laughs> decided to chase me. But from that cliff, if you head down, it's more southeast. I'm going to speed up a little bit. And over here. So, I mean, it is pretty much east. But there's going to be another tomb site. Be careful of these little ball things around here. Because you get close and, yeah, they, uh, they explode. But they do drop you Ruin Fragments, and you can find these all over the place as well. So grab all of your Golden Runes from this tomb site, and then we move on. Now, this next one is going to be a little bit trickier, but head southeast from that tomb site. And you should, at some point, see a large group over here, so it's more east, of the uh, big dudes. But you'll also see, directly in front of me, there's this little statue that's got a glow right in the middle of it. So I need to grab the aggro from one of these. Is he going to... Uh, you're going to get angry, or are you going to glitch on me? Oh no, you mad. You need to aggro one of these, big guys, to actually break this. But there we go, he's broken it. I need to steer clear, go past, grab it. There's a couple of smithing stones right there. There are five level ones and a level two. So I'm going to get away from these. I'm going to get rid of the aggro. If I can, they seem to be very quick. Ow, 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 ow. I might not escape. Now, this one is a little bit further away. So I'm going to pull up the map for this one. And where we are now... We need to head up northeast until we get to about here. So what I'm going to do is press X. I'm going to place a marker. And I mean, it, it doesn't... I'll, just, I'll put a diamond one, just whatever. And that's exactly where we're going to head to. Another little tip, actually, whilst I'm on my way, is if you see these glowing skulls, Run them over with your horse or attack them with your weapon or whatever. Break them because they drop you golden runes. So what you need to do with this part is don't get too close to this massive like bridge thing. Because you're going to be far too high up. Head to lower ground to follow it all the way around. And you're going to come up to an enemy camp. You're going to head not southeast. You're going to keep heading northeast and you're just going to go straight through the camp no trouble whatsoever follow this hill all the way down Hello? Can you hear me? and when you get to the bottom there's going to be a site of grace so interact with that first you're going to touch grace as weird as that sounds I mean there's a lot of weird sounding stuff in this game but then we're going to rest so from this site of grace we are going to try and avoid trouble on this bridge, but stick to the left-hand side of it. And there will be a smithing stone towards the other side. There we go, right here. 
just keep spamming Y or whatever button it is on your way through. And then, once you're the far east side of the bridge, you're going to head southeast. And we're going quite far again. You just basically want to make your way all the way to the bottom. On your way down, you'll see these little shacks. You can find a smithing stone on this, whatever it is out the front. There's also, if you have a little look, there's another site of grace here. So I'm going to quickly jump off and interact with this one. So you'll know if you've done it right because you would have just unlocked the artist's shack site of grace. But from here, we're going to head east. And if you keep making your way east, grab all the materials and stuff, you're going to see this third tomb site. So what you want to do is, as always, grab all of these golden runes. You're even going to get yourself a level 6. As well as all the golden runes, if you can make your way up here. Am I really going to have to use my mount? No, I can just jump up. You are also going to find yourself a cookbook, and then we move on. So what we're going to do after this tomb site is we are going to head northeast. And you should see massive slabs coming out of the mountain. So if we have a little look for those, there's our first one. We're actually going to jump off. It's easier to do this on foot. So drop down onto this one, then over to the right onto this one. Then left, and you're going to go to that edge after coming down here and attempting to smash this. It took me like six swipes. But there we go. One level one golden rune. Hello, big boy. We're going to ignore you. So from those slabs that we dropped down, or the ones we used to drop down, there's going to be some more sticking out here. So drop down to the left, slide all the way down. There's going to be some fighting going on. So we're going to ignore the fight. We're going to go in on our mount. It's going to be a massive bear fighting a load of wolves. Go in, grab the level 2 smithing stone, and then dip as quick as you can. Don't get into any fights. I mean, unless you can take them on. I wouldn't even bother risking it, realistically. So, from this little... Let me quickly grab this. You'll see the fight still going on between the bear and the wolves. But from this water, as you're making your way out, you'll see this ruins. And we're going to head over to that. It's another church. And when we get here, if we go through the little doorway, you're going to see another site of grace. So I'm going to quickly touch grace. <laughs> I mean, that sounds fucking disgusting. But now we're going to rest. And then after that, we're going to jump up. And over here, by this big statue to the left, we are going to pick up the sacred tear. And then over at this one here, we are going to grab ourselves the Flask of Wondrous Physic. But we also get the Crimson Crystal Tear. So there are two things in that little collection there. So what we're going to do is go back to the Site of Grace. We're going to rest. We're going to go into our Flask menu. And we're going to increase the amount replenished by flasks. This is going to use the sacred tier. So your HP and your FP that are replenished by flasks is going to increase the amount you get back. Then you would have noticed, or you might not have noticed, but there is a new tab in the Sites of Grace. And that is to mix some things together. So you can mix two crystal tiers in the Flask of Wondrous Physic. And is going to allow you to create physics with various custom effects. So what you are going to do is click on the first one. You're going to put in the Crimson Crystal Tier. Which is going to restore half of your health. And in the second slot, you're going to put in your Strength Not Crystal Tier. Which is going to temporarily boost the strength in the mixed physic. So all you do is you put those two in there. You don't actually have to craft anything. Because you've already got this flask. 
So this is just going to create the mix for it. So if we back out of this and we press down on our D-pad, we're going to go through all of our uh, flasks and everything like that. You have the flask of Wondrous Physic. If you consume this, you get half of your health back, but as well as that, you have a buff for three minutes, which is going to add 10 strength onto your character. So going into status, I've done six levels. You'll see I'm level seven, so from one to seven. With the wretch class, I put my strength up to 16 so that I could use the sword I have in my hand. And you'll see with this buff, strength is 26 for the next three minutes. And not only that, if you have a look now, that flask is completely empty. You go back to a site of grace. You rest there, come out of it. And you have your flask back. So it replenishes alongside your other flasks when you rest at a site of grace. So what we're going to do from here is go all the way over to the east. We're done in that section. We're going to go back to the Storm Hill Shack. So what we're going to do, this one's quite tricky. If you have a look, we are heading up into this sort of territory. But this is really important. This is actually going to be the most important section of this entire video. Or at least the lead up to the stuff you can do. This is the most important step into becoming overpowered at the start of the game. So from Stormhill Shack, you're going to head north on the main path until you get to where it veers off to the left. And instead of following this path, you're going to go to the right along the dirt path. If you just keep following that, it goes back into a stone path and you're going to come to another bridge. And then if you carry on on this bridge, what we're going to do is at the very end, we have a little thing to grab, which is going to be a warrior's cookbook. Then follow this down. Careful we don't fall off the edge. And then as soon as you get to the bottom of this, you're going to keep following it up to the left. And then you'll see the bridge that we've come from. You'll see the little bit that we've had to come up. And then you're going to follow this little pathway through to the right. And we are going to eventually come across a pack of wolves after we come out of here. So be careful we don't fall off the edge there. Here we go. There's the wolves. Ignore them. Just keep following the path. And as soon as you get past them, just keep following the path that we're on. And straight in front of us, we are going to see a site of grace. Don't rest at this one just yet. Because if we touch grace... So what we're going to do before we actually rest is this church. We are going to enter. So if I jump back on the horse. We come back down here. And inside... You are going to see another weird statue. There's a little person here you can talk to. I say little person. There's a person you can talk to. We're going to pick up the item. It's another sacred tier. And then with this person, you can either donate runes. I'm just going to give him 10. And then you can either talk. You can study sorceries. You can buy some sorceries. Glintstone Pebble, Arc, and also Starlight. But what we're going to do is we are going to ignore that because I'm not actually using sorceries myself. At least for the time being. I didn't mean to jump off. I keep clicking on my left stick as if to sprint. So what we're going to do is head back to the site of Grace. Now we have that sacred tier. And now we're going to rest at it. You're going to trigger a cutscene. Where Melina comes back, the Finger Maiden, that gives you your mount. If you select that you'll go as well, what's going to happen is you're going to go into a loading screen. And you're going to be put into the round table hold, which is the main social hub of the game. So what we're going to do down here is first we're going to go to the table. This is going to be Lost Grace or the Table of Lost Grace. And here we are going to go into the flasks. We are going to increase the amount replenished. 
Use our sacred tear that we found just before we come here. So now, if we check out the flasks, I have six of them. But if we go into our inventory and we have a look, they are plus two. They are actually going to replenish all of your health, no matter how much you've got at this point of the game. Like right at the start of the game, you will always be able to go full health from as little as you can imagine. Like if you've got one HP left, you're going back to full. So what we're going to do now is, if you have a look around, there is going to be the stairs that lead up at the back. Then there's going to be three doorways in front of you. If you head to the one that's on the right hand side. And you follow this one round, you're going to see this big dude over here. He is the blacksmith. So before we interact with him, if you now go into your inventory and all of these golden runes that you have, use every single one of them. If you want to use multiple, like I've got 15 of the level 1s, then what you want to do is select it, go use selected, select your quantity and then do yes. So using them, that's going to give me 3,000. You should have enough golden runes to put yourself up to over 10,000 runes. So you selected all five of those ones and that was 2,000. Then back in, we've got two level threes. And those are going to be worth 1,600. Then we go back in, we have some level 4s, we have two of those. And those are worth 2400, so it builds up very, very quick. We have a level 5 golden rune, which by itself is 1600. And then the final one, the level 6, is by itself 2000 runes. So I've got 13,000, you should have... 10,000 at this point. So what you're going to do now is talk to the blacksmith and then you are going to strengthen your armament and this is where you level up your weapons. So I'm using the great sword. What I'm going to do is bump this up to level 4. This is going to use the smithing stones that you have found. This great sword is something I found whilst I was playing your starting weapon is going to be a lot cheaper to level up. But by the time you've done it, you should be on plus five. Your weapon is going to be really, really strong. So now what we need to do is leave the blacksmith menu. Go back into the main section. You can tell I'm used to playing other games. I keep clicking in my left stick. Where you've got the three doorways, go to the left. And then follow this one all the way around. And when you come to this section down here, on the right hand side, talk to these twin maiden husks. Go into purchase, and yeah, you can purchase a lot of different stuff. The four things that are important for you to buy are the white cipher ring. So I'm going to purchase that one. Then we're going to get the blue cipher ring. We are going to grab ourselves the Lone Wolf Ashes. And then we are also going to purchase the Spirit Calling Bell. So your runes don't matter too much. I have not used a starting weapon. I had about 13,000. I've now got 8,200, so it cost me about 5,000. But with the runes that we found on this little adventure, you should have over 10,000. Then what you're going to want to do is head into your inventory and the white cipher ring you have just purchased, use it. What this is going to do is it is going to look for the aid of a hunter or is at least going to request it when you are invaded. So there's always going to be someone there to help you out. Unfortunately for me, I can't use it because the game won't let me log into their online services. So I'm currently playing offline I have no chance of being invaded, so it won't actually let me use this. But if you have online features available, they're enabled, then you can use this. It's going to request the aid of a hunter when you do get invaded. That's also another little tip. If you disconnect your internet or something, you can play this game offline. 
I have my internet connected, I don't know why, but it just will not let me log into their online services. When you do use the white cipher ring, it's just, it's a permanent buff. You only ever have to use it the once, and it's just always going to look for other real players to try and help you out when you're invaded. You are very warm. Okay, so I've just got something called Boulder Chin's Blessing. It's weird, I'm letting some random person cuddle me. Can I get up now? <laughs> That's just a little bit of comedy to add into the video. I don't know why I chose to let her cuddle me, but yeah. So, if I go to my inventory, it uses FP to temporarily boost poise. I mean, it's quite cool. All I had to do was get down on my knees, let her cuddle me, and I got that. And that was in the little room off to the side of where the blacksmith is. So what you're going to do now, back at the blacksmith, is talk to the blacksmith. You're going to ask about Rodrika. Then go through all the dialogue. And then what we're going to do is go back into the main room. And we're going to talk to Rodrika about what the blacksmith has just spoken to us about. She's right here. And then what you're going to do is tell her what the blacksmith said. Then go back to the blacksmith. And that's going to wrap up this little like quest. So you're going to ask the blacksmith. You're going to go into the same tab again. Talk about Rodrika. Then you're going to ask, would you watch over Rodrika? So now, after you've done that bit of talking, what you're going to do is go to your map and you're going to fast travel back to the table of Lost Grace. When it loads you back in, Rodrika's no longer by the fireplace. What she has actually done, if we go through here, is she is now over here. Talk, and then what we can do after the dialogue is... We can now do spirit tuning. So you will need a grave glove wart, but you've basically just opened up the ability to upgrade your spirits. Now what we're going to do is come out of here. So we're going to go to our map, and we are going to fast travel back to Stormhill Shack. So we leave the round table hold. And then if you go into the shack where we originally met Rodrika, you're going to pick up the item, She's left behind a golden seed. Go back to the site of grace and rest. Then we can upgrade our flask again. I can't do it. You guys will be able to because I actually started the game with a golden seed. I now need two, but you'll need one. So you'll get yourself up to six uses. I've already got six. I've got a spare golden seed because I started the game with one. You get a choice of different items you want to start the game with but you'll be able to get yourself up to six uses. So now what you can do if you want to is you can fast travel to the church of Ellie or Ella. So I'm gonna go down there. So now we are here, what you can do is we can talk to this person over here. This is Merchant Kale or Kali or whatever purchase. And if you don't have any armor, you can buy yourself some armor with some runes. However, I would save some runes. Don't go spending all of it. So now, I look a little bit better than a naked wretch. So just quickly before we get into the last part of the video. Now I've got an upgraded sword. I've got better flasks. I've got all that stuff that we've been through in the video. Now if I want to, I have equipped... Look how slow I roll though. <laughs> That's like the only problem at the moment for me. Your classes and stuff will be different. And I can now hold Y press right on the d-pad i've used a lot of my fp but i now have the lone wolves with me they are aggressive they will attack they're gonna take a lot of damage but you can get involved it's less risk and yeah i've just absolutely slaughtered that guy so just be careful at this point i've still got a lot of runes on me be careful you're not dying so what we're gonna do for the final part is if you go to your map, you will see we are at the church. You're going to head over to this sort of area here. So up to the northwest. 
if you see this statue here, if we jump off the horse and we examine, Guide and Gatekeeper for those returning to the roots has got a beam. It's going to show you where some dungeons and stuff are. So what we're going to do is head in this direction. And you should. It's directly north from that. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see it. Just to the right of my guy's helmet. That was the statue that led us in this direction. So it's pretty much straight north. And you are going to open this door. Earlier we spoke about the Grave Glove Wart in order to upgrade your spirits. So this is Stormfoot Catacombs. We're going to touch Grace. And then what we're going to do is head down here. I was not expecting the combat. I have just died and potentially lost all of my runes. They are feisty little fuckers. Luckily, my runes are right in front of me. So instead of going into that room, if you come down into this one instead, you're going to acquire materials, Grave Glove Wart, level 1. Back up the stairs. Don't do what I did. Don't go into the room that's straight ahead. Go down to the right. There is something in there, but them enemies are in, like, they're assholes, Absolute assholes. So for now, whilst I've got all my runes and stuff on me, we're going to leave it. We're going to rest at the site of Grace. So what we're going to do now from the catacombs is go all the way to the north to Lake Facing Cliffs which is near one of the churches we visited earlier. So, from the lake facing cliffs, you need to head north, and it's quite far. So, I would just get on this path and follow this. So, the tricky thing with this one is, this site of Grace is up really high. It's lake facing cliffs. So, you're going to have to, like, you're going to be starting up there, just by that massive, like, castle. You're going to have to come all the way around, Cut across the lake and then up to here. If you have a look here, there is a highway south site of Grace. It's over to the north of the lake facing cliffs. But it's just another, basically a checkpoint and fast travel place. And the catacombs we're looking for are just north of where we are now. Be careful, there are lots and lots of enemies in this area. And I mean lots of them. So you'll see the castle over there in the distance. And if we go to our map, you'll see exactly where the statue is. It's quite far away. But it's pointing us down here. It's another catacomb that we need to go to. Right, and what I've done for this section is I've actually taken off my armor just so I can roll faster. Because I was over encumbered and it's just going to do nothing but slow me down. So at the very bottom you can grab yourself a somber smithing stone. I just need to try and get out of the aggro of these enemies. They keep chucking stuff at me. Okay, so it's incredibly awkward trying to find some of these places. But if you follow the direction of that statue that we saw... And you just stick to the wall on the right hand side. You'll eventually find this. And there is the door that's going to lead us into the cliff bottom catacombs. So as soon as we enter we're looking for two things. We're looking for a level 2 and a level 3 of the glove warts. So I'm just going to rest at this site of grace. And I'm going to try and guide you guys to exactly where it is. I believe it's not too far. There was one up there. There's an enemy. I need to get out. So that's the first one. It's a level two. And I'm not entirely sure where the level three one is. Okay, so this one... 
I'm probably gonna die. I wanna just try it once, defeating these. I'm gonna drag them back to here so there's no risk of me losing my runes. No, they really hurt. I think that's my runes gone. I got my runes back. I've just fucking died again. I should have took my runes and went. Okay. Pretty please. He's going to be there, isn't he? I'm not even fucking risking it. It is not worth it. I don't know how Boomstick Gaming did it. I really don't. Okay, so imagine you go down there, you get your level 2, you get your level 3. Then what you do is you fast travel back to the Table of Lost Grace. When you get back to the Round Table Hold, and this was available earlier as well, there is a person standing here, and they will... Like, if you say, oh, I see it, or like there's an option that pops up, do the top one, you can uh, pick up some incantations. But we're going to head through the right-hand side doorway... We're going to go speak to Rodrika again. Go into Spirit Tune In. And now we have the required Grave Glove Wart Level 1. So I am going to upgrade my Lone Wolf Ashes. Then you need the Level 2. So I'm going to do that again. And then if I manage to get the Level 3 from that Catacomb... I would be able to do it again. There is one down there, level 3. It's just Boomstick Gaming cut it out of the video, so I can't see exactly where it is. And there's just not enough reward for the amount of risk. So I still have 5400. I could go down there and risk it now, because what I'm going to do... Is now I've upgraded that, I'll get the runes later on. I'm just going to use all of my runes right now. You don't lose anything but runes when you die. There we go, I'm going to put two in Vigor, two Endurance, and two Dexterity. Now I'm not bothered about the runes, I've upgraded my stats. I'm still medium load now, with my chain armor on. I'm going to get this guy's attention. And I'm going to get this guy back up. And I'm going to see if he's a silly enough sausage to drop down... He's already gone. I keep accidentally popping potions. I'm so used to interacting with games by pressing X. I've done him. I've dropped him. I'm not taking any risks though. There it is. No, it's not. That's the level two. Okay, I'm really not sure. Okay, I have no fucking idea how Boomstick Gaming's done that. He, he just, he says it like it's nothing. Go in there, grab a level 2 and a level 3 glove wart, and then get out. So down here, you have the level 2, but then the level 3 is like buried really far into this catacomb. I definitely can't get it by falling down there. I mean, I lost almost a thousand runes. But whatever, I, I could just come down here and farm these. If I wanted to, I'm not going to. And I mean, this video has been incredibly long, but... It should help everyone out that's starting the game. That wants a very powerful start. And I mean, at least I got to level up the uh, wolves. So just to wrap this one up, if I get the fuck out of here, and then because I'm able to summon my wolves, I'm going to do so. It uses most of my FP. Go wolfies! They are a lot stronger, aren't they? Oh, this guy still hurts. 
No, you mother... Look how many there are! I want to defeat them all. Just quick. There we go. And they're, they're just level two. I gather all the runes from it. Come on, Wolfies! Well, there's a big dude down. There we go, I finish that dude off. Oh yeah, the smithing stone for me. I mean, look at that. I've got a thousand runes already. Don't even need to worry about the ones I lost down inside the catacombs. But as I said, incredibly long video. I just wanted to get this guide out to help you guys out. And also give you directions because... In Boomstick Gaming's video, it wasn't that it was bad. It was in, like it was really, really informative and helpful. It was just the fact that a lot of stuff was skipped, like the level three glove war. It would like it would have been really nice to know exactly where to go and how far down to get. Because I got quite far. I died several times. I almost lost like six thousand runes. It was a tough time. But on that note, we're going to leave the video there. It's two hours of recording. I'm hoping I can get this down to as short as possible. I, I would say half an hour, but for all I know, I could have just spoken for about 15 minutes of it. I'm not entirely sure, but I know it's been a long one. And for that, apologies. But I believe this is going to be incredibly helpful for everyone that's new to Elden Ring. So what we're going to do is leave that one there. Let me know your thoughts and stuff in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Yeah.